Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and I'm not proud enough to admit it, but ladies and gentlemen, I am in fact an idiot, ladies and gents. I'm making this video as a PSA, okay, because I went through months of computer troubles when in reality I actually shouldn't have. Ladies and gentlemen, today is the definition of a first world problem. In fact, it's sponsored by a first world problem. Now to understand, graphic cards are a rare resource, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as you've probably seen in the market, buying a graphic card is not possible. In order to buy my graphic card, a portion of my soul was sold to Satan, okay? I have to literally sell myself to the devil. Full cheeks, full goatsy and all, in order to even get a chance at purchasing a graphic card. So around the Cyberpunk 2077 release date, I managed to update myself to an RTX 3090. I decided to treat myself and update my GPU. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the first time really when it comes to gaming computers that I decided to go all out. So I ended up purchasing myself the 3090, which, as you can imagine, is a heavy card. Ladies and gentlemen, this is like buying a Hummer, okay? They're beautiful to drive, amazing to look at, but God, are they heavy, and God, do they sap up all the power in the world. That's pretty much what it looks like, okay? That's how the entire scenario goes. Ever since I bought this graphic card, my computer has been crashing nonstop. We're talking out of nowhere, randomly. When you're experiencing anything, the screen would go black, the fans would ramp up, to the nth degree and the card would enter safety mode. So to understand, I thought, oh no, Muda, you got a bad card. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in this situation, you typically RMA the card. You send it back, you call it a day. I do not tend to do that, okay? It becomes a big issue for me. I send a card back. It gets stuck in shipment hell. I currently have two things shipping to my house that have taken over two months to come, okay? It's an entire adventure and a half, and I could talk all your ear about it. But ladies and gentlemen, in this entire scenario, I decided to sit back and sort of diagnose the issue myself. So after a month had passed since I bought this card and I kept getting black screen after black screen after black screen and the card basically tripping at safety features, I tried to really understand the situation. See, what was happening is out of nowhere, the card's safety mechanisms would actually kick up. Basically, the screen would blank out, you could hear all your friends talking on Discord, whatever movie you were watching, and the fans would ramp up. This is typically so that components can preserve themselves in case of emergencies. Have you ever realized how hot your computer can get? Yeah, that's because these components are designed to get hot, like 80 degrees hot, you know, really, really hot. But ladies and gentlemen, they're allowed to run that hot. It's only until after a certain point, I think it's about 105 degrees Celsius, is when the card's failsafe triggers, okay? Basically, they kill all processes, and they stop, and they basically enter what we call survival mode. And that is something that this card appeared to be doing. Now, to understand, I basically was using this card, and any time that I put load onto it, basically using the card in general, it would trigger this failsafe system. It would black screen out, crash, or whatever. And it was very, very random. So to understand, I was playing games like Deus Ex, the original Deus Ex. This basically tickles the rectum of the card, okay? It's a little, it's a little good feeling, but the card doesn't care that I'm playing Deus Ex. It don't care about JC Denton. However, when I fire up something like Call of Duty Modern Warfare, this card gets toasty. We're talking space heater toasty. We're talking this card can warm up your entire house if it wanted to. And it was only until after I stopped playing like six hours of Warzone with the boys, the actual card would then crash out of nowhere. So I'd have to reboot the system. Now, initially, being a Linux user, I thought maybe Linux was the cause of it. But I decided to fire up Windows normally. I even tried firing up Mac. But then I realized, Max can't even run NVIDIA cards. What a pointless waste of time. No matter what operating system you used, the crash would always happen. So I was glad to know that Linux wasn't the issue. But then what was? Was it just using the card that was the actual problem? So basically for months on end, I basically sat back and th thought to myself, you know what, I'll let it happen, okay? It's not, <coughs> it's not so bad. I'll let it go on, all right? It only happens here and there. Now, when I moved to this house, I started recording longer videos. So things like Save the Kids, I recorded, which are long recordings. Those videos are about an hour long. Save the Kids, when I made that video, it was like an hour and 10 minutes. Yeah, the actual raw recording time for that was like three hours, okay? So imagine recording a video for three hours and somewhere in the middle of it, your entire system crashes and is unresponsive. Yeah, I had to re-record those videos like two times. Save the Kids, I had to record two times. So six hours of recording. 
recording. Now, when I did Rubet, which was basically last month's video series, yeah, those were long videos from my end, okay? So yeah, I recorded part four and six three times. Three times because the system kept crashing. I had to record them in chunks. Ladies and gentlemen, I was losing my mind. I realized enough is enough. So at this point, I went into full scientist mode, okay? Being an engineer, you have to think about things logically and, 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 and just from an algorithmic perspective, okay? You have to really break down everything, right? So I jumped into the magical world. I started testing multiple games. I started running multiple games. Crash, didn't crash. Virtual machine, no virtual machine. Crash, no crash. I went through the entire gamut. So at this point, I tried turning to the internet. I wanted to look at my fellow gaming brethren to see if I could get some help. And one thing I learned about PC gamers is you all have the worst social fucking skills of all time. You could literally ask on Steam discussions, Reddit, YouTube, whatever social media platform out there for the slightest bit of help. And you'll either find the nicest person in the world that is able to help you out. You know, like, I'm a four-time NASA employee, okay? I'm like a 40-year-old NASA employee. I know everything about computers. Let me help you out, youngin. That's a very rare exception, okay? That's like finding a shiny Pokemon on top of a shiny Pokemon. Never gonna happen. Because nine times out of ten, you're always gonna come across ableist fucking Andy. You know who ableist Andy is? The guy on Reddit that you ask the most basic information to. I would literally ask people on the internet, like, guys, I'm getting black screen issues. My card goes up spinning like crazy and you know what the first response is <laughs> hey, get a load of this dipshit have you tried reinstalling the driver in that same like smug face like these people can't get enough of the whiff of their own rectum out of their own nostrils this is how far up their own ass some of these people are yes ableist andy you think i didn't know how to install a driver you think that's not the first goddamn thing i tried over and over and over again sometimes you always find this is a classic have you, have you tried running it as administrator mode? What would that do? How, think about it. How would changing the process elevation of a program or an installation affect the hardware? You idiot. And then, oh, here's, here's another great one. Have you tried running games in 256-bit color? No, I live in 2021, bro. I'm not going to play in 1994 visual styles. Get out of here. But, it, but wait, wait. Here's an even better one. Here, I swear this one always fucking gets me. Because when you go to any support channel, they're always like, their first discussion is, RMA the card. You know, guys, you don't have to send back the card on the slightest big issue, okay? It's a lot easier than what you may imagine. So, ladies and gentlemen, I found out one big problem. You see, in the beginning, we talked about the 30 series of NVIDIA cards, and this also applies to AMD as well. They're not, they're not immune from this either. As graphic card technology gets better, the size increases. See, I've never had this issue before because the graphic cards that I typically used were normal-sized graphic cards. Anything 3070 and above, or AMD equivalent is a chunkier, beefier card. So to understand how a PC works, we have the PCI Express slot, right? This little slot that you put the graphic card into. Now from the back side, we're pretty good supported. You stick those screws on and it keeps the graphic card in place. Now towards the end, it's weighted differently. See, you start to notice how it sags a little bit. It's like a dick that can't get completely hard. That's what we're talking about. But see, unlike a computer, I can't stick it full of Viagra, okay? I can't get it up. I can't get Stella her groove back if you catch my drift. So I, d I decided at this point, is this really the issue? So then I actually ran a couple experiments. I This, this is the experiment. I shit you not. I was playing a game. I flicked my PC case, like right now. You hear that? Yeah, if you do that before my fix, black screens crashes. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that slight little bit of sag, that's what was causing the issue! Ah! Ladies and gentlemen, I, I found out why. See, basically, the sag doesn't really affect the performance of the card so much, but it will jostle the connection. The connection wasn't completely perfect, so even when I tried reseating the card back in and out over and over and over again, I mean, I blew on that like an SNES cartridge, like, <sighs> no. It didn't matter. The sag was the issue because the sag, see, every time you tried like knocking the floor a little bit or adding some level of disturbance to the room, 
crash. That's because it would lose connection because it because the sag was ruining it. The sag the the sag wasn't completely connecting it in. So here's the fix. I went on the internet and I looked around. There are a few people that are willing to sell you hundred dollar RGB like GPU like stands. Don't do that. That's a waste of your money. You can spend that in better places like Forza Horizon Five or some G Fuel code SOG by the way. Why am I using G Fuel? Because that's the route that I went with. I took some of these good old fashioned cans, I opened up the case, and I used it to prop up the GPU ever so slightly. And ladies and gentlemen, thanks to that goddamn DIY MacGyver solution, this situation isn't having an issue. I can finally knock this back and forth. I have no issue. The recording's not gonna crash. No big problem. Now, there are other options. You can, in fact, use some Lego. You could, in fact, use some Mega Blocks. It's really up to which side of the turf war you're on. But the reality of that is, if you choose to go down that path, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that these cards, which can get really hot, by the way, do not melt the plastic. You need some level of heat sinking involved in all of this. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the basic fix that I had to encounter. Ever since then, I didn't have to deal with no ableist Andes. And the only reason I'm making this video is that I feel like the story to learn from this is every Everyone is prone to making a mistake. I made a mistake for months on end, something that everywhere I went to, nobody was giving me the proper solution. Everyone was telling me administrator modes, go to the NVIDIA control panel setup, do a seance to Satan or something, you know, give up your firstborn child. None of those solutions work. Trust me, I've tried most of them, if not all. So what I have learned is the only way to fix this is to go around and just prop up the sack ever so slightly. Now, I wondered, was this an issue that was commonly known? Ladies and gentlemen, when you buy some of these cards, they come with retention brackets. However, a lot of these motherboards and systems that you have are not fit for those retention brackets. They're kind of built for like Optiplexes, Dell systems, or like some sort of corporate, you know, enterprise. Not really for gamers. So yes, prop up your card ever so slightly. If you're having those issues, if you're having any of those issues, and this video helped you fix it, let me know in the comment section below. Till then, I'm gonna go play some Shenmue 3 and finally finish that goddamn game for once in my life. And this time, the computer will not crash. But what will crash is my will to live after playing a game that boring. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.